Do you really want to help me? Or the moment that I tell you I'm not buying nothing and I'm just looking, you're going to turn your back and run away. And nine out of ten times, the sales rep validates their lack of trust in the fact that this individual genuinely wanted to help them. Okay? And we're going to address how to deal with that too. Because when we do approach a customer, and think about what's happening, okay? Why this should be removed from retail and why you should never use this question. In sales, everything you say, everything you do has got to be leading you to the next step. Your objective is not to go out and close a deal. That's like trying to eat a Big Mac in one bite. It's not going to happen, right? And if you go out with the intention of closing, you will lose. The intention when you go out is just to make an introduction. And that's whether they're on the showroom floor or if they're outside. And the only thing, if you are selling anything, the only thing you're selling your customer on is moving to the next step. And what that does for people, that should really take the pressure off you. Because a lot of times, especially when people start, they're so focused on, man, I got to close the deal, I got to close the deal, I got to close the deal. That pressure becomes overwhelming. And guess what? It translates to your customer. Let me ask you, have you ever had a sales rep that was helping you that seemed like they were just a little bit too, too trying to get you to do it a little bit too bad? It was a little bit too pushy to the point where it made you uncomfortable? You might have even been willing, but they just was too at it. you like, uh, and the product, nothing was wrong with it. It was right there. Obviously, you were considering it before the price point was right. So what changed? Your, the, pr the pressure from the individual changed you. Where you said, you know what? I don't like the way they're making me feel. So to spite them for making me feel this way, I'm not buying. You have to understand. Every, and when you hear me say overstand, see, I believe words have power. And so when I say, and you know, I might say understand sometimes, but if somebody understands something, that means it's above the head. You're understanding. To overstand means you're fully on top of it. You have full comprehension. So when you hear me say overstanding, I just wanted y'all to know what I meant by that. It's not physical standing over. It just means full comprehension of the situation. And so what you want to have an overstanding about is that when a sales rep approaches a customer and we ask them a closed-in question, and they give us a, a response that is not beneficial to us. And the sales rep says, damn, man, that person just kicking tires or they just wasting time. No, they're not. They were given an option as to whether they want to or do not want to deal with you as a stranger salesperson that makes them seem like you're stalking them. Thank you so much for checking out the video. If you haven't already, please hit that like button because it really helps the channel. And if you haven't already subscribed, Hit the subscription and make sure that you click the notification bell so you'll be updated whenever I release new videos. And last but definitely not least, make sure that you check out the Selling for Success sales training portal. It has sales training courses, audios, videos, manuals, everything you need to catapult your sales results to a whole new level. So remember, check out sellingforsuccess.org, the sales training portal. I'm Brian Maxwell saying again, thank you, and I look forward to seeing you at the top. So it's just like shooting yourself in the foot and saying, nice shot. And so many of the issues that people run into in this business, especially when they start, is the fact that nobody has sat them down to train them on the psychology of what works in this. So y'all have to understand what Ali does here, what bringing me in and paying me to be here, because it ain't cheap. And to pay me to be here outside, they got managers, they got staff here, they can do whatever your other, other dealership does and just you know talk to y'all for 30 minutes on a Saturday, or just throw you out there on the floor and see who sank or swim. But at the end of the day, he said, yeah, you know, that happens in places. But at the end of the day, it's not about that. The objective is for everybody in here to be a performer. Now, being perfectly transparent, there's 10 people in this room. And I've been doing this a long time to where I know people say, oh, yeah, right, I want to make money. I want to this. I want to change my life. Ah, old habits die hard. So I know a person to be excited and motivated in the beginning and what people, what, what are being given out, they'll be listening to it. But the moment the training is done, the moment nobody is forcing them to do it, they'll stop. And guess what? Out of a group this size, five or six of you are going to take the information you hear over these next few days and you're going to run with it. And now they're not even talking about just in here. We're going to touch on some stuff that will help you out even in your personal life. You're going to take it, you're going to run with it. The other four, maybe five, if I run into you in the next three to five years, you'll be singing the same song you was, if not worse. Now, who is who? That's anybody's guess. And I hope I'm completely wrong. But who's going to be who and which is which is solely up to you. And at the end of the day, we are in here together. We are. Y'all will be closer with each other when we initially get out there on the floor because y'all are going to spend these days. And as you'll see certain exercises, y'all are going to do them together. But at the same time, 
You were not hired, this is not a gentleman's lounge or a lady club. You were not brought in to help you with your social interactions. Now, do relationships establish through working with each other? Of course. Do friendships build? Yes. Do people get into, uh, you know, like relationship relationships? Yes. But that was not the intention of why I brought you in here. So meaning, hopefully you have a lot of friends or you're comfortable with your social circle. Hopefully your love life is okay or at least you're putting it on the back burner while you're first getting started in this. Because the, the objective is for you all to bridge the gap between the customers who have a need to come in the store and the manufacturer and the producer who have a product that they would like to get to them. Your conduit, that's literally all we are. They have the need, they have the product, and we're the ones in the middle that tie it all together. But people overcomplicate it. They make it this complex thing of being in sales. And let me prove something to y'all. And every intelligent group of people I have ever shared this with have all told me they never looked at sales again after hearing this. Now, the reason why, and I, I'm all over the country, I'm in even different parts of the world at times on training. I get the pleasure of seeing all types of demographics. I'm in different geographical locations where the economic conditions are different, where the cultures are different. I get a chance to, to really see all of those things, right? And, and one thing I realize is this, the reason why the gap between the haves and the have-nots is so wide has nothing to do with skill, has nothing to do with opportunity. It has everything to do with just this one fact. And like I said, every group of intelligent people that heard it said they never looked at it like this. You see, the truth of the matter is, from the moment that you were born, I was born, my parents, your parents, every single person that was blessed to be born on God's green earth is born into sales. And I will prove it to you. When a baby cries, that baby is crying to be picked up, be fed, or have a diaper change. That's a sales call. Okay? Any relationship you have ever been in, you were not the only person that thought that individual was attractive. You were one of many willing takers. But yet, you sold yourself in a way that they said, I want to be in a relationship with them. I want to start a family with them. I want to move in with them. I want to live with them. Any previous place of employment that you had, you were not the only candidate that applied. Hell, 270 people applied to this. So you were one of hundreds, if not thousands of people in your other previous places of employment. But yet, when you went in there and you sat down and you spoke with them, you sold your skills and your talents in a way that they felt they got the highest rate of return on their investment with you over anybody else. Okay? Even sitting in a room by yourself, how many, how often have you had days where you're off work that day, you know, everything's kind of taken care of, you say, you know what, I ain't doing nothing today, I'm just going to chill. You have sold yourself that it's more beneficial for you to do that than to do anything else. You've been about to watch a movie with somebody. And what they about to pick on Amazon Prime or Netflix, you're like, oh, man, I don't want to watch that. Hey, let's watch this. It's got this, that, that, and the other. And they say, okay, guess what that was? A sale. You've been about to go eat with somebody before. And where they want to go eat at, you're like, oh, my God. Hey, why don't we go over here? Man, their food is off the chain. It's good. And they say, okay, guess what that was? A sale. Understand what a teacher is. Is a teacher in sales? Most people say no. And that's exactly why a lot of teachers are failing today. A teacher is in sales because their ability or inability to sell that information from that lesson plan to that student determines whether they pass or fail that test as to whether that teacher keeps their job of how good they are. At your place of business, is that in sales? I don't care if you're nursing, if you're a doctor. Yes, it is because you have a wall full of degrees. But if you can't convince somebody to come in and let you treat what their issue is, you don't have anything. So that's a sale. You're selling your medical expertise. The information, because if you misdiagnose somebody and they die, guess what happens to your client base? Gone. In a relationship, every day when you get home, you're selling to your significant other that you're trustworthy, that you're loyal, and that you love them. Because what happens if you stop selling that? They're gone. As a parent, we're in sales. We're selling our wisdom, our love to our children. And if we're incapable of selling that to them, where they don't buy into the advice and the wisdom we give them, guess what they do? Resort to watching the street or getting their, their development from TV and from entertainers. And so one thing you have to realize, sales is something we can't escape. Walking down the street saying good morning to somebody. You're selling the fact that you're in a good mood, you hope you're having a good day. And if I'm pissed off, so and stuff, I'm selling the fact that I'm upset. And here's why. You can't escape it. Like I said, even in a room by yourself, Whatever it is you're choosing to do, you sold yourself that that was more beneficial at that moment than anything else. But yet we don't look at it that way. Even deeper than that, every single time you open your mouth, you're selling an idea, 
an opinion or point of view.